Bienvenidos and welcome, my name is Crossbite and today we're going to be looking at all of the software you need to get started as a VTuber without paying any money up front. I'm going to give you a few different options here as we're going through, so feel free to skip around as I make notes on what we need or what we don't need. Uh, the first thing we're going to need is going to be Vroid Studio. This is going to be used for making a 3D model. You can get it directly from their website or you can get it from Steam. I prefer to use Steam version that it's available because you can get updates without having to download separate software. Steam does that all for you. The next thing we're going to need to do is get VC Face. I recommend this if you have a webcam. But if you don't have a webcam and you don't want any face tracking, then you can opt for V Magic Mirror. This doesn't require a microphone or a webcam and still allows you to load in your 3D model for VTubing applications. Lastly, we're going to need some kind of broadcasting software. I'm going to recommend Streamlabs OBS. You can get just the standard OBS if you prefer, but I like Streamlabs because it kind of does a lot of the work for you. So, to get into this kind of quick and high level, um, we're going to jump into Vroid Studio. And if I see any of you using these sample models as your own model, I'm going to be a grumpy Vroid Sensei. Please don't use these models as your own. Create a new model. I have so many tutorials that you can follow and make something unique and interesting and make it your own. So please follow those. If you're new to Vroid, I have so much content that you can watch and so much you can learn. So once you have your model and you export it out of Vroid Studio, you fill in all the information, and that's important when you're loading it into your tracking software, whether that's going to be VMagic Mirror or VC Face or something else that I'm not mentioning in this video. Um, there are other programs like Me Today or Vup, but for our purposes, I don't really recommend them, and if you're just getting started, um, I think they're best avoided. So first, I'm just going to show you VC Face. It has a nice little performance measuring option here, so if you're computer is super terrible, you can run that and it'll give you a recommendation. And you can even go down to toaster level is what they call it. So high quality, low quality, whatever's going to work for you, you have a lot of options with VC Face, which I think is nice. So you can add your avatar in there, load it in, I've already got mine in there, and hit start. And there I am, ready to go. Another nice thing about VC Face is the first time that you load it up, you get a nice little tutorial that kind of tells you how to use everything, which is a nice feature that you don't get with a lot of programs. That's how we get loaded up in VC Face. Down in the bottom right corner, there's a little X button. That hides all of your stuff and makes a transparent background, which is going to be great once we get to the Streamlabs part of this video. And you can also load in backgrounds with a virtual camera, which we're not going to touch today, but you have a lot of options and customization with VC Face. Another thing to note is if you hit the spacebar, that little X goes away as well, so you have absolute true transparency on this, which again is great for when you're broadcasting. You've also got lots of expressions and things that come right out of your Vroid Studio settings that you can incorporate, and you can assign hotkeys. So VC Face is really a great tool that you can use after your model has been exported out of Vroid Studio, and get all your customizations in there and get everything looking the way you want when you're ready to broadcast and go live with streaming. However, if you're not using a webcam, or you don't want to use a microphone, or any of that kind of stuff, you can use vMagic Mirror. If your language is Japanese, down in the bottom left corner of the main window, you can switch that to English and go through all of your settings here. And I'm going to load in my same model that I just had in VC Face. And the nice thing about vMagic Mirror is that it loads it all for you. It actually does different tracking methods. So if you're not going to use a webcam, for example, you can have your avatar follow your mouse. So wherever your mouse goes, your avatar will follow and look around in that direction, which I think is really nice, especially if you're doing things that are more instructional or educational, such as art. It's going to follow your mouse around and look in the direction of wherever your mouse is. So you don't have to use these settings here where there's a camera, there's a microphone, don't have to do any of that. If you have a camera or microphone, I do recommend VC Face, but you can also use VMagic Mirror. There's a lot of customization you can do here too. Um, as you can see, they've got a mouse and keyboard as kind of a default presentation. 
You can also add a controller if you're playing a game with a controller. So those things kind of appear virtually in front of your model if you want to have those. And if you don't, there's options there to take those away. So you do have some more options there, um, even if you're not using a camera or a microphone. We're going to go ahead and get into Streamlabs now and just talk about what you're going to need. So I'm going to create a whole new scene just to kind of give you an idea of what you would need to do to set this up real quick. So if you're going to do uh, VC face or VMetric mirror, it's actually recommended to choose a game capture. And once you do that, you choose your program, which again in this instance is VC face, and you load that in. And look, there's my model ready to go. Easy peasy. So if I want to add some audio to this, I'm going to go ahead and add an audio output capture as well. That's important because if you don't use that and you're playing a game, for example, your game audio won't come through your broadcast. So just take a note of that, and on the right side there you can mute, unmute, change the volume levels, uh, what have you, whatever's going to be best for your situation. I'm going to go ahead and I'm also going to add a widget. Uh, the nice thing about Streamlabs is they have these widgets right here. The chat box is usually pretty important, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that in here and put that up on the top. And you can move this wherever you want. This is just kind of a standard layout that I use. Uh, a lot of other streamers do use a similar format. On the right here, you can close or expand the chat box. So just for the testing purposes, I'm going to expand the chat box. And down here, I'm just going to type some stuff just so we can see how it would appear on the screen. So you can see my chats are coming through and everything's working as it should. Once we get a little ahead here, I'm going to hide the background uh, because I am broadcasting the entire window, the entire screen here. So here I'm going to load in an overlay. A lot of people use overlays. You don't have to, but if you want to, um, you can download them from the internet. You can make your own, whatever you prefer. So here if I was going to do something where I just wanted to talk to chat, hang out, I could just throw the chat over there in the middle and I can do my thing on the right side here. If I wanted to get into a game, there's also the option that I have set up here where I could put the chat over on the right side and I can have it kind of behind my model or I can shrink my model down if I needed to. And then we could see about loading a game in the primary window there. So I would just go ahead and add and I would choose a game capture once again and wherever whatever my game is I would just add it now because I don't have a game there I would choose add new source I'm just leave game capture and it's looking for a game to capture but I don't have any games to capture right now so we'll just leave it at this default screen here just so you can get an idea of what it would look like so if I've got my model I've got my chat I've got my overlay and I've got my game and that's really just the basics to get you going and get things ready for streaming. So we're going to take a quick moment and just do the same thing that we do for VC Face, but we're going to do it with VMagic Mirror just so I have all the bases covered and you guys can see what that looks like. So same idea. I've got my scene. I'm going to go ahead and add a game capture. And when I add that, source. I'm going to name this one BMM just for convenience. And there I am. Look a little squished, but we can fix that. If any of your windows need to be resized in Streamlabs OBS, you can shift and click on a corner and adjust, and you have free adjustment with that. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, BMagic Mirror also sets a green screen by default as the background. I've just changed that to the transparency, so that way I can just drop it right in there without having to mess with any chroma key settings or anything like that because Streamlabs does support transparencies. So there we are, and I've got myself down in the corner, and again I can adjust the size and position, just dragging that around. So pretty easy. Again, that's really all you need to get started. So you're going to need your modeling software, which Vroid Studio is kind of the go-to. You're going to need your tracking software, whether it's VMetric Mirror or VC Face, and then you need something to broadcast. Um, one thing I need to note is down at the bottom, you have a record option or a go live option. And if you hit go live, the nice thing about Streamlabs is that it prompts you to 
insert a title and what the game is that you're playing before you actually go live, which is always nice. You can sync that with Twitch, which is a nice feature, so you don't have to go to the Twitch website and actually put that in manually, and it does it all for you. So, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. If not, please give me a thumbs down. If you want to see more stuff like that, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya!